Hello there. Are you looking to start your budget and envelope stuffing adventures from scratch? Have no idea where to start? Maybe you're already in but looking for some tips to streamline your process? Well then look no further than this video as I will walk you step by step on how to start as a beginner budgeter. And my method is not only simplistic, but it will work for both cash and digital budgeters. You don't want to miss this guys. Welcome to the Two Sister Bees Studio. My name is April and today I'm going to be showing you a super simplistic and basic way to get started with budgeting and envelope stuffing. You can use the time skips in the description box to jump around, but I highly recommend that you start by grabbing a pen and paper and follow along to absorb as much of the information as you possibly can. I am completely starting over on my own budget and I figured this would be the perfect opportunity to walk you guys along with me and step one is knowing your income and expenses. I promise you it sounds more complicated than it really is. So to start, I am using the total budget beginner set from our Etsy, but you can easily follow along this method just using a pen and paper. You can also use these PDFs in your tablet by using a program like Penly for Android or GoodNotes for Apple. If you want to digital stuff, but you're unfamiliar with the programs, I highly suggest that you check out tutorial videos on YouTube before you purchase them for that reason, because I'm sorry, but I can't be tech support guys. <laughs> Eventually I'd like to move to full digital, but for now I prefer using the paper and keeping everything together in one of these insanely cheap button folder files from Dollar Tree. So start with page one of the total budget beginner set or just a basic calendar and your bank statement from last month. So this is an undated calendar so that you can use it anytime and print as needed. I went ahead and filled in the dates for May. You can also write your to-do list here and here is a habit tracker. And you know, you can use this a lot of different ways. Not only can you write in like took a walk or even a no spend challenge, but you could write in your mood. So you could put a happy face on Monday, you know, mad on Tuesday, you know, <laughs> whatever your mood was, if you want to track your mood or if you even want to track the weather, just write in a little, you know, sun or cloud or whatever it is. You can use this for many different things. All right, so you've got your calendar and you've got your bank statement. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is write in those paydays. So if you get paid every Friday, write in payday. You get paid once a month, write it in once a month. We get paid the first of the month and we only get paid one time. So I'm gonna write my payday in there. If you wanna write in how much you get paid and then how much the bills are, it will help you on page two. So you're gonna need that information anyway, but you don't have to write it here. I'm gonna go ahead and actually write it all in. So let me take a second to do that. All right, and here is my income and expenses. So here's my income and here's all my expenses. Now, years ago, I have this calendar filled. I had something due every day. So if you're there and your calendar is a little more full, that's okay, you're starting to keep track, this is good. So you also may notice that I don't use coin amounts and that is because whenever I have an income, I round it down. So instead of 24.86 and 25 cents, I just round that 25 cents down. And whenever there's a bill like our mortgage is 332 and some change every two weeks, I just round it up to 333. So income down, expenses up. And that actually helps create a small buffer in your checking account already so that you know if you're over on something a little bit or your averages were rounded a little weird it'll help now if you're just starting out okay <laughs> and you've got your pay in here and you're not really sure your paycheck isn't exact look at the last i don't know four six eight times that you were paid and try to find an average amount that you're paid and again round it down so my electric bill obviously is not the same every month. I just kind of figure out an average and I go up because it's better to have more money than less money on hand. All right, so we've got our monthly overview done. If you wanna write a monthly goal in there, you can do that or you can just write the month and date in here as well. So if you have any appointments or any other thing you need to remember, you can just write it in here. I'm good for now. So I'm going to move on to my income and expense sheet. So you're gonna write your month and year in here. All right, so the first column is your income. Write in all of the income that you know you're going to have, add it all up and write your total at the top here. Then you're gonna move on to the credit and debt. And again, get that bank statement. Let's start checking on some due dates and amounts. We're talking car payments, credit card payments, loan payments, those furniture store bills, any of your revolving credit debt. Five years ago, I would have had this filled, possibly another sheet. But as it stands today, I only have a car payment and one credit card. 
but I don't want you to look at my debt and think, oh, you know, she doesn't know the struggle. Oh, I know the struggle, friends. A bankruptcy, foreclosure, repossession, I've been through it all. And if I can make it, trust me, you can make it. You ever had your couch repossessed? That one's not the fun one. All right, anyway, <laughs> I'm so glad that part of my life is over. If I can make it, you can make it. Because as you can see, we have a very limited income here. And the real secret, okay, so let me tell you something. So the real secret isn't a secret. It's just accepting where your income is and learning to live within it. It's retraining that brain of yours that you don't need new shoes, you need less debt. Wear those Walmart Bobos for a while and it'll be worth the sacrifices in the end. All right, so back to business. Let's add up our 259 and our 50. And that makes my credit and debt total 309. So now let's do your living expenses. Things your household has to pay in order to survive daily life and live in the bliss that we all take for granted. So this is your rent or mortgage, your water, your electric bill, your cell phones, your internet and TV, and those little quality of life bonuses like Netflix. So let me go ahead and put mine in here. Okay, and my total is 1,076. So I'm gonna write that right here, which now takes us to the essentials. This is where we're gonna create a little bit of a budget of ourselves, right? So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take that projected income and we're going to deduct credit and debt total and our living expenses. And that leaves us with 1101. Okay, so are you in the negative already before you even begin your groceries and things? My sister Jen has a video about how to get ahead of that. I'll go ahead and link that for you guys. But if you're good, then let's take our balance back to essentials. So the first thing that I do is I add a little bit of a buffer in case I'm slightly off on my projected numbers. If you're just starting out, be generous with this. I mean by like hundreds of dollars to be generous with this until you get a feel for the flex and your finances. But for me, I'm comfortable with just a $25 buffer. All right, my next thing is obviously groceries. That is a big essential. Be realistic here. You know, some months you're gonna be eating ramen. Some months you can have salmon. <laughs> Get friendly with some easy and semi-healthy recipes that you can create. Learn to heat up leftovers. I feel comfortable with my grocery budget this month being 450 and that is for my family of three. The next thing for me is my gas. And luckily I don't have to go a lot of places. I have a very gas friendly vehicle, so $40 should cover me. And then our cats, so I'll just write pets. And I allot 60 a month to them. Some months I have a little left, some months I need a little more, but 60 has been pretty comfortable. So do you have kids? Do you have tolls or parking fees to get to work? This area is for the things that like ding your daily credit debit card. So, this is a good place to set a budget for them. Keep it simple and basic. Your extra stuff is coming up, but this is a needs versus wants budgeting. All right, so let's put our total of this. Let's add up our total. Okay, our total for that is 575. All right, we did it, see? Not that hard. Let's go down here and figure out all this stuff. All right, add total income. Okay, 2486. And then deduct your total expenses. So that's our 309, our 1076, and our 575. And that leaves us with 526. Add all these expenses for that other line. Okay, so that's 1960 for living expenses. So now you have a very good outlook and understanding of all of your income and expenses. So now we're gonna take that 526 and head over to the next page, which is envelopes and savings. This is where the fun stuff begins. First, let's write in that balance from expenses so we don't forget it. And then if you had any previous month balance, you can add it, which would give you your full total, but we're 526. So that is our full working budget. And this is extremely important for the digital stuffer over the cash stuffer, because you're tracking your digital balance in your bank and you need to know where every penny is. So this is all pretty important to keep up with if you're a digital one. Which brings me to an optional but very helpful suggestion. I have a secondary account that I keep this money in. So once I have enough of a balance built up for this, I'm gonna actually look into getting an interest-bearing account, even if it's a small amount of interest, I mean, every little bit helps, but 
I like having my envelopes separate from my living expenses. So if you wanted to do that as well and get a secondary account, basically when you come to the end here, you're gonna move, which is what I'm gonna do, move this 526 to the secondary account and then just continue as normal. Okay, so here's where we're going to discuss step two, which is your envelopes. <sighs> Take a deep breath with me. You getting anxiety about it? I used to, I don't anymore, and I'm gonna tell you why. These are going to constantly change and evolve with you. There is no wrong way to do it. To start with, we're gonna keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate your life. So you can easily just buy a box of white envelopes, write on it what it is, keep them in a shoe box. You don't have to get crazy fancy. If you are somebody who likes to get a little fancy, you can get an A5 or an A6 binder these have six rings inside and they hold these plastic envelopes based on the size that you want. So as you can see, A5 is a bit bigger than A6. I've used both, I like both, but I'm going to go with A6 this time. And this is actually my savings challenge binder, but this is my cash one. So we're gonna be using this. And here's where you're going to decide if you're going to be a cash or a digital stuffer. I was a cash stuffer all last year and honestly, our bank is pretty far away, it's quite a drive, and it was becoming a real pain in the butt to go there every single time I needed to pull my cash out, which is one of the reasons I kind of fell off and stopped doing it. So I'm going to try and be a digital stuffer this year, and I'm going to use prop money so that I have some kind of visual of my funds. I have a whole video about prop money that you can check out that I will link for you, but I'm not gonna get too in depth here, but I will say, that a digital budget requires a lot of willpower and diligence and this prop money really helps remind you that you have a commitment going to the system. So your next question is probably, how do I choose what envelopes to stuff? Again, don't complicate it. Write down the things you spend money on over the course of a year. I like to start with the, I have to pay this or bad things are going to happen category, <laughs> which is my, my car insurance. So we're gonna start here. And we're gonna say, this is my expenses binder. And first of the month is car insurance. All right, I pay a six month premium. Well, it's 594, but I round that up to 600, which means it's $100 a month for me because I get paid monthly. If I was paid weekly, that would be 25 a week. So average it out. And to help have a little fun with my cash stuffing, I created these little universal trackers that are available in our Etsy, but again, pen and paper, you don't have to get fancy. <laughs> so I'm gonna pick one of these and knowing that I'm gonna be doing a hundred every time I do it, I think I'm gonna go with the smaller amount of symbols. So category, goal, and then your breakdown. So my category is car insurance. My goal is 600. So my breakdown is 100. So every time I color one of these, I know it's $100. There are two types of trackers, okay? So I use these universal ones where there's a set amount that I have to put in every payday. And then these I use for the other ones which are kind of more on the stuff what you can, when you can envelopes. You could use this type in both. I mean, you could use this type in both, but I like to keep them a little bit different. So car insurance is 100 and there's 100 total in the envelope. So let's set our calculator here with our 526, right? And we're deducting that 100. So now we know we have 426 for the rest of the envelopes. All right, so I colored my son. <laughs> Sound like my child. And we're going to create our first envelope. Let's go ahead and open, put in our dashboard insert. Okay, and I'm actually also going to write on the back that I put $100 in there. So here's this, and here's my $100 in prop money. And if you were just using cash, you put your cash in there. Okay, move these blank ones till we get to that point. And here we go, first one in insurance done. So the next one is my tax and tag for my car. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this one because I have to put in this amount every payday or I won't have it when it's due. So here's category, car tag. I believe the goal is 250 for the year. I think it's actually less. It's not something I've been able to check. So we'll go ahead and put $20 a payday in there. So we're gonna write that on our sheet, write it on the back that we put it 
May 1st. Coat in our little raindrop and let's create our next envelope. Here's our 20. Okay, let's put this one in. All right, tag is done. And then last that I have to do this way is property tax. So here's this, and I'm pretty sure that that's gonna be 300 by the by the 12, so that's 25. And I'm a little later in the year, so I may have to scramble a little bit, but I think I've overestimated these. We'll see. I think I'll be okay though. So now I know each one of these is 25. Let me go ahead and color. There's my little heart and get my 25 in prop money. Write it down. Okay, put this one in here. Now those are my have tos. So now I'm gonna add some shoulds. So <laughs> that's going to be my house upkeep, my health upkeep, and my vehicle upkeep because things break on those three things and it helps to have some funds ready for when that happens. I also wanna add in my emergency tracker. So let me go ahead and start filling these out. So let's go ahead and create these envelopes. So here's house upkeep and we're gonna use the standard deposit slips for these. So let's go ahead and get it started with a $10 addition. So here's our 10, here's our tracker, and let's write it on this. Okay, put that in here. Next is health upkeep. Start the tracker. And this is for dental health eye doctor. So we're gonna want a pretty hefty amount here. A nice goal would be 500. And we're gonna give this a healthy $25 to start. So we'll also write it here. Okay, 25. Start this envelope. Okay, vehicle upkeep. So we got tires and oil changes and all that fun stuff. We'll give this a goal of 200. And we'll start today with 15. I think that's a good start. Okay, 10, 15. We're making envelopes. <laughs> All right, so next is Emergent Bee. And Emergent Bee comes with these cute little trackers. So I'm gonna pull one out. I'm gonna put these other one here for later and I'll show you what we're gonna do with those. Every honeycomb is $10. So we're gonna start Emergent Bee with one honeycomb. Okay, let's start Emergent Bee. All right, we're getting somewhere. Now, finally, we get to add a few fun trackers. So we're gonna do birthday, Christmas, and then I have an anything. Here's where them extra trackers. So let's go ahead and pull out birthday, Christmas. So anything would be next. This is all for savings challenges. So go ahead and start with the birthday tracker. And there's three. Which one do we wanna start with? Ooh, that's tough. <laughs> We're gonna start with this one today. Put these right here. All right, so it's a dollar for every balloon, three for a cupcake, five for a slice of cake, and 10 for a big cake. So we're gonna start small because there's no birthdays coming up anytime soon. So we're gonna go ahead and color a balloon. All right, so I think that this is the expense binder and it's already looking a pretty beefy here. So we're gonna go ahead and call this binder done. And now we're gonna start this binder, which is going to be the fun stuff. So here, I guess we'll call it the fun binder. <laughs> and we got the B-Day and we're putting in $1. So here is our one. Okay. Put the birthday in here. All right. Now our Christmas one, let's choose our tracker. Again, not easy. I think we'll start, I'm gonna save these other ones for when we start getting closer to the end of the year. So I think it'd be fun, more fun to color the candy and stuff. So we'll start with this one, put these here. And it's $1 per candy or cookie or decorate the gingerbread house and save $5 per symbol. I'm gonna go ahead and actually put in, let's see where we're at here. Let's see. Let's add up our total here so we have this. 
10. Okay, so we've got 200 into 205 in there. So 526 and deduct our 205. So we have 321 for this type of stuff. All right, so we can do pretty decent with Christmas. Let's put 25 in Christmas. I'm really gonna drag this tracker out. So I did five of the little thingies in there for our 25. So here's 25. Let's make our Christmas envelope. There's Christmas. All right, so I have savings challenge and then in anything, I mean, it's gonna be for me, my kids, takeout, just, I figured it was a good idea to just have <laughs> something for anything, right? We're gonna give it 50. So here's a 50 for anything. And we have to make it a tracker. Hey, there's anything. I've got these extra things. So these are all for savings challenges. We're not gonna quite get there yet. These I printed and laminated in case I had other things that I wanted to use. So we're gonna go ahead and make a envelope for our extra trackers, which is all of these extra ones. There we go. So this is gonna be in the very back of the book. All right, so let's see what we have left. All right, so I have 245 left over. So yeah, I should have probably stuffed some of these a little more heavier, but no big deal. We're gonna go ahead and this month put the full 245 in our savings challenge envelope. Okay, so there's our 321. We'll double check. Plus 205 is 526. All right, so let's get our 245 and we're gonna do it in smaller increments because it's for savings challenges. So you wanna know the cool thing about digital stuffing is you can just print your own money. <laughs> Didn't get the right denomination from the bank? Oh well, just print it. All right, let's double check that this is indeed 245. 60, 80, 1, 20, 40, 60, 80, 90, 2, 210, 220, 230, 235, 240, 241, 42, 43, 44, 45. Here's our 245 for savings challenges. I'm gonna put my savings challenge dashboards right there for right now because we're not quite to that point yet. So now we're gonna move on to the true budget sheets. This is going to help us with those little budgets that we created for ourselves and essentials on our incomes and expense sheet. So I've got groceries, gas, and pets. So there's two true budget sheets. The shorter one, which will work for my gas and my pets because I'm not gonna be having a whole bunch of transactions for that. And this larger one, which will work if you're using a, you know, a budget where you're gonna be dinging it a lot, which I kind of think my groceries would fit on this page. So I think I'm gonna just stick with the smaller one for all three of mine and put this aside, but do know that that's there if you feel like you will exceed this. So let's create a true budget so that we can keep track of those amounts that we set for ourselves. So our three, our categories are, let's put groceries at the top, which was our 450. There we go. Our cats got 60 and gas, 40. So what you're gonna do is whenever you buy something, you're gonna write it down here. You're gonna deduct it from that balance. And at the end of the month, when you're done, you whatever you have left over, if there's anything, you move it back to that income part up there. This is to keep you within that budget. So you know when you're starting to get to the end of that, time to start buying that ramen. All right, so guess what guys? We did it. You have just set up your budget and your envelopes, but there is one final part to discuss, which is your savings challenges. So the first thing that you're gonna do is choose your saving challenges games. So I'm going to go with our busy B cards, which can come with this dashboard, our rainy day savings book, which has these dashboards. And my last one is going to be from our scratch off club. So these are our cute little scratch offs for our club members. And then the kit. So here's the mermaid game. We're gonna go ahead and let's get all of our dashboards together. So I figured with the cards and the book and then just being a part of the club myself that that pretty much covers plenty of new and fun games to keep myself entertained. All right. So that should be all of my games. Let's put them 
So let's do the book from the back of the book to the front of the book. And 100 envelope, no spend. Okay, so I kind of want busy bees and then whatever's going on with the club. And then we'll put scratch offs. All right, so this is now the fun binder. So we've got our birthday, Christmas, the anything. Then we roll into the savings challenges, which is our scratch offs, monthly game, our cards, and then the book. Nice, I like this. Although I don't think it's gonna close, it's not. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's talk about the savings challenge portions. Okay, so before I get into this, I'm sure somebody out there is going to say, why not just move that 245 into your savings? I don't know, hypothetical person, why do anything for entertainment value with that logic? I mean, sure, I could just move it over, but I will have no real attachment to that money, especially considering it's digital, it's just numbers on a screen. I want some attachment to my funds, I wanna save my money, and I want goals with that money. And playing fun savings challenge games creates a memorable experience, attachment to the funds, and gives me a goal-oriented mindset. All right, so let's look at the tracker. Savings challenge goals. I am saving for, I wanna pay off my car. My car. And what do we need? We need $9,000. Let's go, right? So we're starting the rainy day book. And I'm starting today, which is, which is May 7th. And we're starting the Busy Bee Cards, which is also May 7th. We're starting Scratch Offs on May 7th. Today is a day of change. And then finally, the mermaid game. So we'll call it, call it the treasure island games. It's been so long since I've played games. I don't even know if I know how anymore. <laughs> all right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is put all of these in order. I mean, I may end up hole punching them and putting them in a three ring binder, but again, for now, just gonna keep them all in this so that whenever I have my budgeting stuff, I'll pull this out and my binders. Let's shuffle this money in the right trays. Yeah, like I said, dude, I don't even know if I remember how to do this. It's been so long. Oh, this is terrible. Let's shuffle up some cards. Okay, instruction cards we'll lay aside. Cut the deck. Yeah, it's all coming back to me now. All right, <laughs> let's start with the book. I probably should do the no spend thing later, but I'll worry about that in a little bit. And I will do this eventually. Like I said, keep it simple, guys. Don't start out trying to do all the things. You will be miserable. So I'm going to actually start with the monthly game. So let's go to May. All right, here we are. All right, how do we play this? Help your flowers grow by rolling as many dice as you'd like and saving the amounts rolled. Write the amounts you saved on the flowers. Plant your seed by writing your chosen starting amount in the box below. I'm gonna roll one dice, six. So we're gonna start with six. And this goes in months. So here's our six. Help your flowers grow by rolling as many dice. All right, let's do one more. 
And we'll do two. Seven. Seven dollars on that flower. And I think that's a good start. So today we are putting five, 10, 11, 12, 13 dollars into our monthly savings game. All right, let's choose a card and it's save two. So I'm gonna go ahead and put honey money in the front so that when I'm done, I can just put it all together. All right, so there's rainy day. Let's do a scratch off. Ooh, which scratch off do I wanna do? You know, I wanna do these, but I need to make myself ones that have different numbers than you guys because I don't want to give them away, you know? I don't want you to be like, oh, I already knew what that was. So I'm not going to do these. I'm going to wait. So having said that, let's play the new mermaid game. Okay, so this side is the board game. And then this side is let's search for sunken treasure. And it has all the directions on it, but I know how to play. So I'm going to show you. So the first thing you do is you roll your dice to see what currency will be in your chest. So I rolled a two, which means it's gonna be captain's quarters, right? Then you choose a chest to check off and save that. So quarters. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna to need to do is make change for myself, which is another awesome thing. So I can just take the 10 and it's automatically 10, 10 ones, no craziness. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and go with four quarters for a dollar. So put that there, check it off. All right, let's go again. Four, all right, so now we're at sand dollars. So let's go ahead and mark this big 12 and go with 12. So 10, 11, 12, and I'm gonna go ahead and do it one more time. One, okay, so we're back at quarters again. So let's go ahead and do eight quarters for $2. I like this game. Let's do it one more time. <laughs> five. Ooh, okay, so now we've got the pearls, which are $5 each. Let's do a big one. Let's do the six for 30. Because, you know, this is actually a lot of money for me for savings challenges. I should have stuffed more, but <laughs> we're okay. All right, so there we go. Let's see how much we're saving with our treasure island. Let me go ahead and sort these. All right, so we've got 20, 30, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. Not bad. And you know what? Let's flip it over. Let's get our pretty little pawn and our dice for that. Aren't these cute? I was pretty happy with those. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, so let me pull the card and we got Buzzworthy. Save based on the genre of the last thing that you watched. This morning I was watching True Crime on YouTube. So I'm gonna go ahead and add those together for $6. So one, two, three, four, five, I need more. All right, let's make more change. That was six. One, two, three, four, five, six for honey money. For busy bees. Okay. Let's roll through this one time. All right. Two. So that's three dollars. One, two, three. One, two, three. There's a five. I'm gonna take a second and really make some serious change here. Hold on. All right, so let me move this over to this pile and now we need five. One, two, three, four, five. Three, one, two, three, another five. One, two, three, five. Four, one, two, three, four, two dollars. All right, we're gonna stop there and if i wanted i could mark that spot and skip over all of those next time but i just like playing it as i can okay so let's count these and we're going to change these for something bigger one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twenty look at that on the dot 
20. All right, so, so that's $60 between our two games, our two Treasure Island games going in to our envelope. And quite honestly, I don't want to continue because I have too much set aside for this. I need to stuff more, which I was kind of doing this video as educational, you know, kind of trying to do my own stuffing at the same time. So let's see what we have left. So 20, 40, 60, 80, one. We're gonna exchange this for a 100. I really need to print some lower denominations here. So I have 1, 20, 40, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64 left. So I have 164 left out of that. Now, it's kind of good because if you have any funds left, the easiest thing to do would be to place them back into that savings challenge envelope that we made in here and use them for next time because that total amount has already been budgeted from your bank account for these. So you're good to go. Yeah, I probably won't stuff my savings challenges next month or maybe even the month after that. And I may need to go back in and change a couple things, but you get it. We're good. This whole thing was to basically show you how to do it. And as you can see, you may need to tweak some things here and there and go back and fix things. Oh, and let's go ahead and get my busy bees. Let's see how much we saved today with busy bees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Awesome. Awesome. Another little, and you know, seeing how prop money is, to be honest with you, I may switch to A5 because it will fit much better in an A5 envelope. Cash seems to work better in A6. So when you see me actually doing my own, my setup may be a little bit different, but that's the point, right? To go through it, see what happens, see what you can do. It's all good. Okay. So check it out, guys. You just set up your entire financial budget and envelope system. So obviously this method may or not work for you. And as I, as I said, as I go along, I will likely make a lot of adjustments to find what works for me, but hopefully this has helped shake the cobwebs off of you and you are now ready to begin your own savings adventures. So everything that we discussed today will be linked in the description box below for you. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Here's another two sister B video to help keep you on track. Bye guys.